There are a number of reasons why Nazi Germany lost World War II, but one would have to say above all that the reason for the defeat was bad planning. Hitler needed a quick war and had been able to take down his opponents one by one in the lead up to the conflict and to a certain extent even in the first two years of it. This possibly allowed success to go to his head. Nazi Germany was unable to produce what it needed for the long run. The Allies controlled most of the world's raw material production areas, even after the Japanese conquests in Asia. Germany produced next to no oil. However, after the alliance with the Soviet Union in August 1939, it could rely on Soviet deliveries, which together with Romanian supplies, fueled its Western European and Balkan campaigns in 1940 and 1941. However, the attack on the USSR had not been thought through as far as oil was concerned. Once the war in the East could not be won, then the writing was on the wall. After all, you just cannot get oil out of the ground. Or at least you can't if there's none there. By the middle of 1944, Nazi Germany faced a catastrophic situation with many raw materials, but most of all with fuel. Its largest source, the oil fields in Ploesti, Romania, was under threat, not only by bombing, but also by the Soviet advance. In any case, Ploesti did not produce enough for its needs, and other sources of oil, such as Hungary and eastern Poland, only made up a fraction of the requirement. Fuel supplies were pinpointed by Allied planners who turned their bombing fleets on the Achilles heel. Part of the bombing offensive was directed against oil targets, including that of substitute oil manufacturers. The United States Air Force and the Royal Air Force carried out 22 airstrikes alone on the Leunerwerke, which is to the east of Leipzig, then one of the largest synthetic fuel plants in the world. Another such enormous synthetic fuel plant was at Perlitz, today Politze, near Stettin, today Szczecin. And at another was at Berlin, near Leipzig which were also hit in air attacks. More and more motorized units were no longer fully operational due to a lack of fuel. To make the seriousness of the situation absolutely clear, in May 1944, 156,000 tons of aviation fuel was produced. In July, it was only 29,000 tons. This led to the ridiculous situation where the most advanced fighter aircraft in the world, the Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet, at that time also the flat fastest plane ever produced, having clocked up speeds over 1,100 kilometers an hour, once on the ground had to be collected by oxen or horses as there was not enough fuel to take it to its taxiing point. To make the situation even more serious, Whereas in May 1944, the fronts had been completely quiet. By July, with the Allied invasion of Normandy and the battles there in the West, and the Soviet summer offensive, Operation Bagration in the East, then huge amounts of fuel were needed. So obviously, the answer is to seek alternatives. The obvious alternative would have been to have sought a peace treaty. But seeing as the war had to go on, other sources of fuel were needed. The partial conversion of vehicles to wood gasifiers did not provide a satisfactory solution. Due to their poor efficiency, the wood gasification systems were only suitable for cars and trucks, but not for tanks or other tracked vehicles or even motorcycles for that matter. But there was another possibility that was extracting fuel from oil shale. With the processes known at the time, only very small amounts of shale oil were to be expected, which could be used in diesel engines with glow heads. In normal circumstances, it wouldn't have been worth the bother. However, these were not normal circumstances, and the Third Reich needed every drop of oil it could lay its hands on. The Schwabian Alp 
is located in what is today Baden-Württemberg in southwest Germany. It contains large oil shale deposits. The deposits extended close to the surface over a length of around 150 kilometers, more or less. The Nazi regime hoped to extract it for use in combat vehicles and fighter planes. Three test facilities using different extrusion processes were set up. In September 1942, a company was founded called the LIAS Allschäfer Forschungsgesellschaft MBH. In the spring of 1943, it started construction of a plant in Frommen using a smoldering process called the Swiss oven, which was developed at the University of Stuttgart and tested for the first time in Metzingen. The Frommen concentration camp was established on the 1st of March 1944. On the 20th of September 1943, the Reich Office for Economic Development founded the Deutsche Altschäfer Forschungsgesellschaft DOLF, D-O-L-F, or rather D-U-L-F, to operate a test facility at Schoenberg to, and to test a new process. The Schoenberg concentration camp was set up and the first of prisoners arrived on the 16th of December 1943. On the 30th of July 1943, a coal recycling company called the KOU or in German KOU was established as part of the Hermann Göring concern and the Mannesmann Rohrenwerke from Dusseldorf. On the outskirts of Chorzingen, 40 kilometers southwest of Tübingen, they set up an underground plant to test the methodology for underground smoldering and gasification of combustible materials. The oil shale was mined underground here and immediately heated and carbonized. From mid-January 1944, 200 to 300 concentration camp prisoners were to be used as slaves for the construction of the project. Despite the urgency of producing fuel, the transport of prisoners was delayed until February 1944. The Schürzingen concentration camp appears to have been set up before the end of that month, as it's mentioned for the first time in writing in an annex to the Protective Custody Camp Report of the Natzweiler concentration camp on the 29th of February 1944. Despite the unsatisfactory results of the attempts to extract oil from oil shale, Albert Speer, Reich Minister for Armaments and War Production, perhaps thinking that there was no other choice, ordered in July 1944 that the oil shale deposits on the edge of the Schwabian Alp be exploited. Ten oil shale plants in Württemberg and what was then Prussian Hohenzollern were to be built with the aim of extracting oil shale over an area of around 110 square kilometers and all the work was it to be exclusively done by concentration camp prisoners. The SS had seven subcamps of the Natzweiler Stuttgart concentration camp built in the region along the tubingen allendorf railway line and the ballingen rockvale branch line for the extraction of oil shale by these prisoners. The camps were between Hecklingen and Rottweil. The oil shale works were built where the oil shale layer was as close as possible to the surface of the earth. The factories and warehouses were run by the SS themselves. The SS provided a total of more than 10,000 prisoners from Auschwitz, Stutthof and other camps. These prisoners were housed in the concentration camps at Bissingen, Erzingen, Dautmergen, Dortmettingen, Schornberg and Schortzingen. They were exploited as slaves in the oil shale works. At least 3,480 died. The SS received between four and six Reichsmarks daily rent per prisoner and per working day. The concentration camp prisoners were not only supposed to do the slave labour in the actual quarries to extract the oil, but they also had to build the infrastructure, including their camps. So the aim was to produce 10 oil extraction plants between September 1944 and April 1945. 
each plant was to take between two and four months to construct. Only four of these camps were actually built. They were at Bissingen, where that was Bissingen concentration camp, and there'll be a video about that later. Ertzingen, Ertzingen concentration camp, which was uh, actually built at Dortmitting. There were meant to be two concentration camps and only one of the four uh, planned plants was actually built. And Schoenberg, which was completed and went into operation. So of these four plants that were built, the oil that they produced was of very low quality. The shale had a very low bitumen content, only about 5% of the oil shale. 35 tonnes of oil shale had to be carbonized in order to extract one tonne of mineral oil. The mineral oil was of such poor quality that it could only be burned in special engines. By the end of the war, around 1,500 tonnes of mineral oil had been extracted. A tonne of oil is roughly 7.49 barrels or 1,116 litres. At the end of the war, less than 1.7 million litres of fuel had been produced by this method at such great cost in suffering and human life. To put this into context for the war effort, a Tiger tank burned around 480 litres per 100 kilometres on flat cross-country terrain. Now, if it had been able to fuel a Tiger tank, which it could not, but if it could, for the sake of argument, it would have been enough to fuel 348 tigers for 1,000 kilometers. Or to put it another way, one human life for every 100 kilometers worth of fuel. A witness from the Bissingen camp, Alfred Korn, described the pointlessness of oil shale mining. I observed that hundreds of prisoners worked to get a drop every five minutes then nothing for five minutes. And that was the achievement of the Bissingen oil shale. I hope you found this interesting. This video came about as I was writing the text of a video about SS Hauptscharfführer Johannes Pauli from Switzerland, who was convicted of crimes committed at the Bissingen concentration camp. And one of his victims was a lady who picked up an apple after an air raid, and for this Pauli murder her, showing, as far as he was concerned, the economic needs of the Third Reich always took second place to cruelty. That uh, was part of a series that I was doing about Swiss people in the SS, or sort of think of one theme that I sort of uh, branch out from there. So if you subscribe, then you'll be informed when that video is published.